Now, bubble lid. Holy shit, two! I need to see that again. Holy fuck! Everything I say is based on my own opinions and experience. I'm not speaking for the public, and my feedback should be treated as such. You are watching Miko Evaluates. With 25 years of experience on Mega Man games, 7 years of doing the No Miss Buster Only challenge, and countless Snapster races, as well as being the QA tester for Mega Man Unlimited, I'm here to tell you my honest opinion on different Mega Man games. So sit tight and learn. Hello people and welcome to Nico Evaluates Mega Man 2 Atari D make. Oh god, yes. Thank you, Skipper, for making this a reality. This game fixes pretty much everything that's wrong with Mega Man 2 and that's why it's on my series. Now, of course, it's done in Mega Maker. What else would it be made in, right? Again, the window doesn't scale uh, big enough, so it's either like full screen or it's like a stamp. I guess I'll just deal with it. I, I think there was a comment on a previous... Uh, Serious idea. I think this was the Street Fighter Cross Mega Man one where someone uh, uh, gave me uh, instructions on how to uh, actually make the window bigger from outside of the uh, game, I think, but I don't really feel like tampering with stuff. I'd, I'll just get into it. I'll just ignore it. It's a bit of a stamp on a 2K resolution, but uh, we'll just deal with it. Again, can't bind the uh, gamepad controls, so you're gonna have to use uh, something like uh, X Batter or uh, Choi the Key, which I'm used to by now, but it's still a hassle. So, a pretty good first screen tells you all of the uh, buttons you can bind, and that makes it easy. Press enter. We shall. Nothing happens. Why not? Choi the key? Hello? That's the reason, my Choi the key. That's why I hate this fucking Choi the key bullshit. It keeps changing the profile, even though I didn't, uh, I didn't allow it. There we go. This is a fan-based non-profit game. Mega Man is copyrighted by Capcom. Please support the official release. I don't think we should. In the year 2000X, a super robot named Mega Man was created. We already know the intro, but let's check it anyway. Because it's not the same. And let's uh, adore the music. So this is basically an Atari D make. Uh, it's not exactly Atari-like. The graphics are way better than what Atari could ever do. But it's made in honor of the Atari. Not so much with the hardware in mind, I don't think at least. You could not pull this off in the original Atari. Maybe in the, I think, 5200? Maybe? I'm not sure. Check that out. So we cannot criticize the game for its lack of graphics, really, so we're gonna have to ignore the graphics portion of this. But we are gonna take a look at what makes this game far better than the original Mega Man 2. Now, I do have one problem, but it's not the game. My problem is that I tried to, I tried to reach uh, the developer, I tried to ask him for a mod that, where I would have all of the weapons allowed, but he never answered me. Guess he's busy or just having a vacation or something, so we're gonna have to do it without the mod. So what I've done is I beat all of the Robot Masters so far, and this game actually allows you to revisit stages. Imagine that! That's the first fix that comes to mind. So we can indeed use all of the weapons in all of the stages and check them again. Now, this requires us to actually beat the stages like this first, and then go back and beat the stages normally and then check the boss. Or we could do the revisits, so leave a comment uh, what you would like. If it's enough for us to just check the bosses in the revisits, then I'll be uh, happy about that. Or if you want me to actually play the stages again and check the boss with the buster, then we'll do that as well. So leave your comment how you would like that to be tackled. So just check the uh, portraits first. So if we go to start, and we go to new game, there's the portraits. Airman looks like he's been ran over by a steamroller. Quick man's just like uh, like Candy Bar said on our Snapster uh, blind uh, race. He looks like he's wearing one of those cheap uh, superhero masks. But uh, <laughs> there's only so much you can do with graphics like this. Bubble man looks pretty goddamn good. And I would go as far as to say Heatman looks better than in Mega Man 2's portrait. But it's the Atari D make, what the hell do you expect? We're not here to criticize the graphics, except of Airman. So let's go back to title and actually load the game so we can actually check the weapons as well as we go. 
So let's do the same order than we did on the Mega Man 2 evaluation. So let's start with Crash Man. I'm not sure if the boss will be there. But we'll see. So kind of kind of the same deal here at the beginning with these tillies. The placements are kin to the Mega Man 2 uh, original. A bit of a hectic start, but if you want to imitate Mega Man 2, just do it, I guess. There's nothing wrong with this uh, setup here. They wanted they wanted to have the same kind of screen on the first one. It's a bit improved. Like there's much more space on the right here. I like that because the uh, original was pretty cramped. So there's more space on this one. So it's already an improvement. Let's actually check if Bubble works on Tilly's. I'm kind of interested in that. Oh man, see that? That's how you utilize a weapon. A bad weapon should always deal damage to almost every enemy in the game. That's just common sense, look at that. The bubble lead actually kills Tilly, it's not that you would use it against them. But let's let's take a look at the weapons first, because this is the best part of the game. So Leaf Shield does not fly off when you move. Holy shit, right? It's like a skull barrier. They fixed the Leaf Shield already. I'm coming on the face of this game. This is a huge improvement, and you can shoot it off by, by pressing B. Holy shit, right? Why was this not in the original game? Why, why wasn't the original game like this? Why not? This is fantastic. Next up, quick boomerang. Still as broken as it was in Mega Man 2, at least what I remember. So you can still pretty much shoot over 100 times, or maybe even 200 times. But we'll see as we go if uh, it actually kills everything in the game, or just if they uh, made it worse or not. So we'll see about that. That's still interesting to see. Flash Stopper, you can cancel it. Just press B again, and the Flash Stopper uh, stops using the energy. Look at that. You don't have to use the entire bar on the same, <laughs> same uh, button press. Like, whoa! Now I still kind of, I still kind of hate air mass weapon, but it's because of the weapon. The weapon just is like that. But we'll see if it actually kills enemies that are above. It does kill Tillies, so that's correct. But I never really liked air mass weapon, but uh, I still think it would, it should just train uh, one bar, not two. But that's just me. A mediocre weapon anyway. Then we've got a faster charge on. Uh, Atomic fire, which is very cool, and you can just keep it uh, charged like this and kill enemies with it. This is extremely fun. What an improvement on the original weapon as well. And when you fire it off, it doesn't uh, train that much energy. You can fire the little uh, balls as well, but you can only fire one ball at a time, so you have to wait for it to disappear. But what an improvement still on the weapon. Huge, huge improvement on the atomic fire. Ridiculously cute weapon now. And it's actually like you, I could see myself using that weapon. And well, Metal Blades. Kinda train faster. One, two. Like, see, now it trains after two Metal Blades. What a good nerf. One, two. One, two. See the energy train. So now you actually have to think about using this weapon. And you can't shoot up and down anymore. You can only shoot diagonally. So you cannot shoot up and you cannot shoot straight down. That's fantastic. What a good nerf on the Metal Blade. Uh, see, the energy is already half-trained. Such a fantastic job on the weapons on this game. Really adore the work that has gone into it. Crash bombs, they actually explode now. They work on Tillies. Uh, I do like the crash bomb, the... Uh, Listen to that explosion effect, that's kin to Atari. <laughs> Love that. So we'll see if we get any use out of the crash bombs or not. And we only have item number two, that's what I was talking about. We don't need all of the items, why would we? So that's it for the weapons, they are actually ridiculously good. And I don't mean good by overpowered, I mean good b They have a good balance. That's how you make a set of weapons, they all have a use now. And that's very cool. We also have the energy balancer. 
which I cannot fault Mega Man 2 for it for not having it. But my opinion was always that every Mega Man game should have always had the energy balancer. That just makes sense. That makes sense to have it. It doesn't make sense not to have it. Already, I'm loving this game. I'm already, I've had more fun in this game, in this one screen, than I had in the entire game on Mega Man 2. And the controls? They are fluent as fuck. These are one of the tightest controls in any fan game that I've ever played. They just control like a dream. Everything works. It's so fluent. And you feel like you're in control. Let's get out of this first screen. So the screen scrolls a bit too fast for my liking though. That's extremely fast. But there's probably a reason for that. We're probably gonna figure that out later as we go. Cute placements again. Completely possible to go about this section with just a buster. So if you just scroll up here. So there's a lot of time to get by that. You don't have to wait for the stupid tellies to uh, do their thing. You can just ignore them and go if you are fast enough. Even if you're not fast enough, you can just kill them and then go. So that's pretty cool. And look, they raised the first platform here so you can easily take down the Met. Uh, what comes to the Mets though, look at their face. That's hilarious. Look at that cute Met. For the younger audience that doesn't know what Atari is, the Atari uh, 2600, uh, go check the Wikipedia on it. Because you might be shocked right now, what am I playing here, right? But here... They first taught you a lesson, here's a Met on this platform. Get used to jumping, get used to shooting. And you can scroll the screens back, so that's helpful, helpful for our evaluation. So here they teach you, here's a Met, just kill it, there we go. And then, they do it again, but do the original platforms from Mega Man 2. Now you can, now you know your jump height. You, you have an easier time with that. So let's see if the bubble lid kills the Mets. Bam! Right as it should. I can't remember if it did on Mega Man 2, but that's how it should work. Let's see if the leaf shield uh, blocks bullets. Oh my god! It blocks bullets, it's a shield! Just like it should be doing a shield that blocks bullets. Unheard of! Now these lifts are a bit of a... The developer put their own twist to these lifts. So you have to jump when the arrow does the little uh, clock motion. If you don't, you'll get hit. It's a, a fun mechanic. And I do like the knockback on this game. Uh, it's good for the Atari graphics. It's not too long, it's a short knockback, works for this game pretty well. Jump height, also, I do like it. And uh, this lift, uh, I'm not sure if I would have preferred the original lifts to be on this game. But this works fine as well, it's the Atari. Atari was much a much simpler console. So this is more like catering to the Atari era where everything was a bit, a bit simple. So I can't fault the game for that. But I would have probably loved to see the original lifts on the game as well. Just to see how well he would have uh, done with them. So we can freeze time here. And just cancel it. And just use a portion of... Portion of the weapon. And it doesn't freeze the platforms like in Mega Man 2, that was just dumb. And you can also pause when you are... Uh, when, it, when the time is frozen. So here it makes you rush a bit. Also works pretty well. Loving the game. I've already completed the game previously, but I just, I had to have this game on my series. I just had to have it. You guys are gonna love this game so much after this. Alright, let's get on with it. This room was pretty fun as well, made you rush a bit. Then, suddenly, Metal Daddy from Mega Man 4. That is kinda hilarious. It, it actually fits in this stage. Crash Man stage. Doesn't have a lot of mess originally, but metal. For some reason, metal daddy just fits in. Now we don't have the ring boomerang, so we could use something else here. Of course, I already damaged it. Can't can't leave the room here, so you can't uh, you can't scum the boss for just leaving the room and coming back later. So that's good as well. But I imagine the crash bomb pretty much kills it. Like there, it's gone. So good use of weapons again. I accidentally filled the wrong weapon there, no matter. 
There we go. Empty room though. Probably the checkpoint. Maybe? I'm not sure where the, where the blo blocky is from here. You know, the uh, guy that comes like this and sc scatters around on the floor. That used to be there. I think so, at least. So here's the unused sprite from, I think, Mega Man 5. A little met trapper thing that was never used. But they used it in... Uh, what other game did they used it in? I can't remember right now. Mind is escaping me. I've played so many fan games already. Rock Force? That's... No, I think it was Quint's Revenge, actually. Yeah, it was Quint's. So it's back. And okay, rooms. Nothing wrong with them. Energy refill. Good that there are so many refills on the stages here. Really comes in handy when you use the weapons. So you could freeze time here again. <laughs> Unless you're a dumbass and do it like that. But just to show it's possible. Not sure how you would get that E tank. Notice something uh, cool about the PPs though. Look when they uh, come out of the egg, they actually pause for a moment before they attack. That's also pretty cool. Although it kind of negates the challenge behind it. The challenge was to position yourself right as the egg landed, so the PPs would follow you. But right now it's kind of easy to scum them, if you know what I mean. You can just... When the PPs come, you can just uh, do that. It's kind of easy now. But I still think it's a good design, nevertheless. Not bad, not bad. How would you get that E-Tank? I guess with item number two. I guess that's how we'd get it. Look at that. I didn't realize that. The item two doesn't explode when it hits a wall immediately. Look at that. It stays there and gives you time to jump off. Whereas in Mega Man 2, the item two just explodes when it hits a wall. I think they are they are both okay designs. I'm I'm four? The item 2 just disappearing when you hit the wall, because it kind of crashes into it. But I'm also for the way that it doesn't explode on the contact, so I think they are both good designs. But look at how well this works here. You have time to climb this ladder. Like holy fuck. You actually have time to react. Because the PPs don't actually come at you straight up. So that's the reason why the PPs work like this in this game. It's just amazing. So let's let's see how the E-Tank route is. Is it as punishing as it is in the original game? So this route is a bit more difficult. But let's see if, if this route punishes us for trying to get the E-Tank. There is no E-Tank, but there was also no punishment. That's fine. But maybe I already took the E-Tank on, on my previous save game. I can't recall. If somebody remembers if there's an E-Tank here, let me know. And if the E-Tanks get replaced by Weapon Energy, if so, that's kinda cool. But in any case, the Shotman wasn't there, because let's, let's be honest, the Shotman is a poor design. So let's actually try to get up there. Kite the uh, pippies. Pause the game, reset the- Oh! Ooh! I cannot reset the uh, item 2 by pausing, that's fine. So here's a 1-up. Look at these guys. They actually can't get up here, which is fantastic. Can they? If I just go full speed here. Nope, they cannot get up here. Look at that. So you just... They take a lot of hits. That's fun. That wasn't sarcasm, by the way. So these are pretty close to the originals. But their jump height has been reduced a bit, I think. Which is just fine. So air shooters should kill these guys. And that it does. One hit. One fucking hit KO, that's amazing. What else would you think that would kill these guys? And <laughs> the bubble head does not ding. Even though it does deal horrible damage, it doesn't ding, and that's the way it should be. Of course, you can flash here, just skip all of these. Crash bomb. Pretty much kills in one hit. That's amazing. Metal blades. I would not use metal blades on them. Fantastic job on the weapons. This, like, atomic fire is one of my favorites. It's it's so fun to use. It's so fun. Like, it's just superb. I just I just like killing things with this. I could do this for days. And let me be honest, that uh, this is not a paid review. The developer didn't ask me to do this. This is not a sponsor. This is just me enjoying a well-made game. Let's see if the boss is here. 
It's not. That's fine. We are gonna check the bosses on the revisits. That's what well what that's probably what we'll do. Unless you guys wanna see it on the actual stages, we can do that as well. I believe we did Flashman on episode one of Mega Man 2, so let's do that now. It also skips the uh, transition as it should. We are gonna check the tra transitions too later on, but for now let's concentrate on actually beating the stages here and we'll take a look at the bosses later. Shotman, you come on the screen, you have time to react. That's good. So what weapon would we use for the Shotman? Buster works. Of course, Buster. Buster's fine. What else could we use? Flash. Because we can actually pause it. Crash bombs. Holy fuck. Kills it in one hit. I... Like, I can't believe. It's so simple. Like, simple things work. It's so simple of a job. And I can't understand why Mega Man 2 could not pull these off. Now that guy down there is a bit of a rough... Well, you can manipulate it like that. So, leaf shield works well. Crash bomb on the wall. Get past this part. Now, bubble lid. Holy shit, two! I need to see that again. Holy fuck. One. Two. Holy shit! It kills it in two hits! Are you... Are you serious? Things work like I would expect them to work. Like what is this? Am I dreaming? What a fantastic game. I'm... I'm speechless. You have the weapons for the city. Look at the metal blade completely sucking. Look at me using other weapons to deal with stuff. It's unheard of. There's so much you can do in this game and just have fun. There's so many ways that you can produce creativity. There's so many things you can do in order to go past these screens and it's so fun as well. It is so fun. Look at that. The air shooter two hits. One pro probably been enough. Oh, there's a blocky here. Uh-oh. There we go. Three hits only. That's good. Doesn't scatter. If it scattered there, that would have been extremely harsh. Let's fill our weapons as we go, because we don't have unlimited weapon energy here. That shotman is still a bit... Uh, in a bit of a rough position. But that's in the original Mega Man 2 as well. I would have probably moved it, moved it back a bit. Maybe, but then again, this stage is so easy. Might as well take some damage while you're at it, I guess. So this guy's behind a wall, but it doesn't reach us here. So if we didn't have the crash bombs, would we still be able to kill this guy on the uh, left side? Or are we kind of fucked? No, the heat goes through! <laughs> oh my god! I actually did not know that. It goes through. There's one below us and we can't really hit it. Because we can't throw the middle blade straight down, but we can freeze time though. Or just time it well. It's not really in our way, look at that. Like, It is pretty well placed. And see the right side. You no longer are forced to take damage from these enemies because they are not in the way. Imagine that. Like, I'm completely blown away by this game. Every five seconds. The designs... The developer saw everything that was wrong with Mega Man 2 and fixed it. You can kill these things with the bubble. Bubble it. Man, if somebody suggested me to play this game when I was a kid, I would have... Came in my pants. Straight up. We can use the middle blade, I guess, for this guy. Two hits, that's fair. But the Metal Blade is no longer the weapon of choice for everything. It is no longer the best one to use. This room is a bit strange. Kind of mysterious, let's go here. Fun that we have all of these weapons at our disposal now. I kind of have, I kind of want to check that room out. Can we go back here? Yes, we can. Oh! But we get knocked back right away. 
Oh! So let's check that room. Actually, that room is so similar. Let's check this one. So, is this guy random or did he actually know how he works? So, as you jump, as he lands, that guy should not fire bullets. So that's uh, one thing where research was not adequate. But that's fine, look at the bullets, they're not as fast as they, as they are in Mega Man 2. So again, the design choice here is just fine. It works out, because it's not unfair challenge. But in Mega Man 2 the bullets are so fast, they'll just hit you pretty much. Unless you do some crazy dodging. So he does four shots. Let's check if it's easy to run under him. There we go, he basically just jumps over you, that's that's what it is. So I would not fight this guy with the buster, that's rough. And the Cho doesn't drop out, out of it. I kinda actually like that, because the Cho was always the thing that fucked me in Mega Man 2, the Cho jumps out. It's kind of a cool design, yes, but it doesn't work in practice in my opinion. So let's see if there's a weapon. I would probably use the crash bomb, because it's a big enemy. <laughs> oh god, yes. Yep, I was not expecting that to work, honestly. This is hilarious. Atomic fire, kills it in one hit. It's actually fun to use weapons here. Yeah, I would not expect the atomic fire to do shit, honestly. Quick boomerang. Eh. Sucks. But man, this is fun. Fuck you! <laughs> oh, it carries over from screen to screen! Oh, this is just perfect. <laughs> oh god! E-tank up there. Can't get it anymore. But we already have four E-tanks from my previous gameplay. So I would probably use the leaf shield here. Very nice. Good screen. Some alterations, of course, have been done on this game. To produce more lovely stages again. So all of the annoying things that were going on in Mega Man 2 have been fixed for the most part. What comes to level design? Level design is extremely fun, extremely cool, and the problem spots have been indeed fixed. So let's check this route. So we land here. Might as well, uh, and I, uh, pro I'm probably using the weapons on the stages from the bosses, but some of the enemies return in the wild stages anyway, so it kinda doesn't matter. Holy fuck, the Metal Blade dings off. Nice. The Metal Blade is no longer the weapon to use. And isn't that just great? I no longer find myself using the Metal Blade all the time. And that's the biggest problem of Mega Man 2 in the first place. You can just use one bar of energy with this weapon and uh, go under the guy and then just pause it. Look at that. Actually has a use. There's probably one of one too many of these guys here. Just keeps going on and on, but it's still fun. Try to cater the original game too, and I understand that. So crash bombs work on these guys. Amazingly, just as I would expect, honestly. Excellent job on the weaknesses of the enemies. Look at the little guy. The Roombas are on Flashman stage, funnily enough. So Crash Bomb doesn't actually work, that's interesting. Leaf Shield doesn't work. But about the atomic fire? Nope. Is there any weapon that kills this guy? Nope. That's actually interesting. Nope. Oh! Bubble Lead being the only weakness of those Roombas. That is just like... Did I make this game? Sure feels like it. Of course I can't make any games. I'm just taking credit to myself for no reason. The developer thinks just like me. He saw all of the problems that I saw in Mega Man 2 and fixed them. Thank God there's a person on this earth who can code and make a game and make my ideas a reality. Of course he didn't know about me before he made the game, but we already shared the same ideas. Not to say that uh, 
Not to say that I had any influence on this game whatsoever, because I didn't. How could I? He didn't know about me. But he saw all of the same problems as I did, and that's fantastic. Great minds... ...have sex with each other. Fun... These uh, teleporters are fun. And the flashing doesn't really bother me. It's so subtle, it's not bright at all. And it works... Uh, and it's kinda catering the flash mass stage anyway. So the guy's a bit ways away. Use the atomic fire. <laughs> like, I'm having so much fun. Just evaluating this game. This is the most fun I've had so far in the entire Nico Evaluate series. It's so much fun! The stage design. Incredible. Incredible work. Just incredible! It does reach. That's, <laughs> that's amazing. Was a bit of a hard shot. Of course, it, it does seem like I'm literally licking the asshole of the developer here. But are you seeing? Are you seeing this? If you enjoyed the episode, leave a like. If you didn't enjoy, leave a dislike. Don't worry, we'll, be, we'll look at the bosses later. Uh, leave a comment below on how you would like us to do it. Go do the stages again, or just show them in the revisits. In any case, I'll catch you later. Oh, I just want to play more. <laughs>